My beloved brothers and sisters, generally we as Muslims, as people who have submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should be conscious about the disobedience of Allah. When it comes to sinning against Allah, something within us should keep us away from it or should at least make us feel that we should not be doing this. And if we fall into it, it should make us regret almost immediately. That's a sign of a mu'min. So a believer is the one who stays away or if he hasn't stayed away, then immediately he regrets and he engages in tawbah and he seeks the forgiveness of Allah. But not all sins are of the same level. You will find there is something known as minor sins. The minor sins are those wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not issued a specific severe punishment for that particular sin. So it's considered as a minor sin. Those that are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a specific severe punishment has also been mentioned to be that which will be meted out to those who perpetrate in that sin or who perpetrate that crime and do not seek the forgiveness of Allah, then that's a major sin. It's a major sin. And from among the major sins, there are those wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets out instant justice or very quickly He punishes a person. One of those things is when you mess with Allah directly and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has considered sacred. When you begin to challenge Allah, then he does not really delay in punishing or in dealing with the matter appropriately. I wish to draw an example today from a beautiful surah in the Quran, which is named after the elephant Al-Fil. Most of us know that surah off by heart. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil Tarmihim bi hijaratim min sijjil Faj'alahum ka'asfim ma'kul I said most of us would know this off by heart. It is connected to a certain incident and that incident is very, very interesting. The Kaaba was in Makkah al-Mukarramah. It was built long before the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was built the way it is today in the place it is today by Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam. Prior to that, there is mention of it being there at the time of Adam alayhi salam, etc, etc. But in more recent times, the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is when it is confirmed that this was, bait, uh, was built, al-bayt, the house. So in Yemen, there was a man known as Abraha. He built a place of worship and he wanted people to come there. And unfortunately, people were not coming there. He was a powerful man. He was a political man. He had a little bit of the religion as a sideline. You know, a lot of people use religion for politics and to make money. So what happens is when they don't get the business that they had wanted to get, they start looking at the reasons why. And in this case, Abraha found that the, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons is people are still going to Mecca to the Kaaba. And you know, there were idols on the Kaaba at the time and so much wrong was happening at the time. But the Kaaba, everyone knew that it belonged to Allah. Everyone knew that. Even though they put their idols on it, even though they had whatever, they knew that it belonged to Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. They knew that he, there was an Allah. There was a Lord who owned this house. So what happened is Abraha decided, you know what, I need to destroy this house. Why should I destroy it? Because it's affecting me. It's affecting my business. It's affecting the people from coming to where I am. And what I want them to do, they're not doing. So he decided I'm going to take an elephant, a massive elephant. Elephants were unknown in that part of the world. He decided to take this huge elephant. Al-Fil refers to one elephant, massive one. And he went with his army of people and he decided to march on to Mecca from Yemen. He was in the south. He started marching. And as he's marching, you know, when an army wants to go to destroy, they take with it whatever they wish. So what happened, anything that came in their path, they either destroyed it or took it, usurped it. They did what they liked. They were unruly. 
And as they were entering Mecca, they saw a large number of camels. They just took them and they decided these are ours. And they went forth and they continued until they were getting closer to Mecca. And then, you know what? One of the leaders of Mecca was the grandfather of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was the year of the birth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The year of the birth. It was known as Amul Fil, the year of the elephant. You know, we used to think there were many elephants. But if you look at Al Fil, it's one elephant. The year of the elephant, because that's the year the elephant came to Mecca, subhanallah. And so this man here, he looked at this elephant, he looked at Abraha, he looked at whatever, he knew his camels were all stolen because they were Abdul Muttalib's camels. He was the grandfather of the Prophet ﷺ. His camels were stolen, nice camels. So he spoke to this Ab Abraha and he said, you know what? I want my camels back. So Abraha began to scoff at him, laugh at him. He says, you know what? You're interested in these little camels. Don't you realize we're about to destroy everything of yours? We're, we're going to destroy the Kaaba. Listen carefully. The intention is to destroy whatever you have. That Kaaba is going to go. You're worried about these little camels? It's peanuts. It's child's play in our language. This is nothing. The main thing is something else. You know, if as a leader of Mecca, one would have expected him to say, hey, listen, please don't attack the Kaaba, right? Because for them, it was economy, right? Economy meaning, they were not Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ was not yet born. And so what happened is for them, people used to come when a lot of people come. You know, there is business that happens. There were these festivals that used to take place at the time known as Ukav and Mijanna and so many others in Mina and other places. And this was in Mecca. This man was, says, I'm going to destroy the car, but you're worried about your camels. Like I said, if he was a true leader, he wouldn't worry about his own camels. Imagine your car is parked outside. A man is attacking the masjid and some, some of his men are taking your car and you're more worried about your car than the masjid. Does it make sense? Well, I think with us, maybe sometimes we might, you know, be worried more about that. May Allah forgive us. But my brothers and sisters, listen to this. It's a very interesting story. The man gave him an answer. Wow, that answer, that answer itself has in it good news for us and a warning also for us. He says, Ana Rabbul Ibili. You know what that means? These camels, I'm the owner of them. I'm, I want my camels back because Ana Rabbul Ibili. I'm, I'm the owner of the camels. As for that house that you want to destroy, it has an owner who will look after it. Subhana Rabbi Allah, Allahu Akbar. Did you hear the statement? Today you take the statement with you and put it in your heart. Carry it, spread the message to others. I swear by Allah, that house, it has an owner. He will look after it. You don't worry. Me, I'm worried about my camels here because these are mine. Subhanallah. What an amazing story. Look at the lesson. Allah is telling you, don't mess with what Allah has declared sacred. If Allah says this is sacred, watch out. You're playing a game, not with me, not with him, not with someone, but the house of Allah. So the punishment when someone desecrates the house of Allah, or someone wants to blaspheme what is sacred by what Allah has declared absolutely sacred. They are playing a different type of a game with a totally different power, totally different. You and I might not be able to help much, but you have to have faith that Allah will deal with them. Someone wants to burn the Quran. It hurts us. It will really pain us. But trust me, the owner, the one whose word it is, he knows how to deal with them. He will deal with them. If he wants guidance for them, they will get guidance. When people speak evil about Muhammad sallallahu it hurts us. It pains us. At times, we don't even know how to deal with it. May Allah grant us the sanity to be able to deal in the correct way with this type of blaspheme and desecration, etc., etc. But don't worry. There is a greater power that's more concerned about that than you and I. He will deal with it. He knows he is in supreme control. You believe it? The answer is you're supposed to. Yes. The statement has moved me online, shaken me. Subhanallah. So now Abraha, the camels were sorted out. He began to march on. As he marched on, what did the Rabbul Bayt do? What did Allah do? The surah was revealed to tell us what Allah did. Allah says, forget to prove that you can come with the biggest beast that you've ever seen. We will send you the smallest ones we've ever made to destroy that. You see, look at the Iman, look at the faith and the Yaqeen. Even though at that time, these people, they were not Muslimin, but they knew there is a power. You want to mess with this? No, no, I don't need to talk about it. You go and see what will happen. Just go, carry on, move. It's up to you. Subhanallah. 
Don't play with the house of Allah. In our cases, I told you it's good news. It makes us feel good. Someone wants to harm Baytullah al kaaba that part of that Allah has considered sacred. You and I might hurt. You know, it might hurt us. It will pain us. But hang on. There is a Lord who will sort the matter out. However he wants. If he wants to destroy, he will destroy. If he wants to guide, he will guide. If he wants to give them time, he will give them time. You don't worry. You just relax. You become a better person. You must know there is a Lord. He will deal. But in our own areas and in our own lives, you cannot come into the masjid to steal from the house of Allah. You're playing a bit of a dirtier game than if you were to steal from someone else's house. You see, you come to create disaster in the house of Allah. There you are playing a dirtier game. Just wait, just watch. You know why? Lil bayti rabbun yahmihi. Again, this house has a lot. He owns it. He's going to look after it. You go, you go. He will do it without you. You want to arm? You wait and watch. What will happen? Time will tell. May Allah forgive us. It's a serious warning. It's good news, isn't it? Because when you see a lot of the times we are worried. What are we worried about? Makkah and Medina. Are we not worried about Makkah and Medina? The whole Ummah is worried. Concerned in a good way. In a very nice way. But remember something. Allah is in charge. He did it in the past. He revealed a surah to show you his power. Don't worry. It can happen again and again and again. And it has happened in the past. Even after the surah was revealed in a different way. So this is something you need to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, don't you see how your Lord did with the people of the elephant? Do you see how Allah did it? They Their plan, their plot, wasn't it totally AWOL? Didn't it go astray? It didn't go as they planned it. They were planning, we're going to go, we walk over. What's this? That elephant could have been as big, if not bigger, or a little bit smaller than the building we want to break. It wasn't just an ordinary building. Subhanallah, you're missing. You're playing games. Don't do that. So Allah says, Arsala alayhim tayran ababi. Allah sent, Allah sent this bird. Small little birds, little minute items. That which you probably won't even be able to see properly. And what could they hold in their beaks? Something smaller than a pea. But for some reason, altitude, whatever it was, as it came down, shoo, it went straight through. Gone. What happened? Elephant. What happened? Paralyzed. Later on, gone. Smithereens destroyed Kaasfin Makul as though they were all eaten, not just them, the whole army gone. What happened? You don't know. You played with the Lord of the house. That's what you did. Played games. So this is why I want to say it again. It brings some beautiful feeling inside. When Abu Talib tells this man, Ana Rabbul Ibil, Walil Bayti Rabbun Yahmi. So my beloved brothers and sisters, for us there is a twofold lesson. To say the least, perhaps the lesson is even bigger, but two to say the least. Number one is you need to understand Allah will take care of what he will take care of. It's there. If he has considered it sacred and he warned people about it, then don't worry. He's going to manage it. He is the owner. He is in control. He knows if he let people loose for a while, it is because he chose to let them loose. It's not like he didn't manage to control. No. He let them loose for a while. Allah gives you a chance. When you and I sin, doesn't Allah give us a chance to repent? He gives you a chance. He gives you another chance. You repent. He tells you, don't worry. You turn to me, I will forgive you. But turn. Now, there is a difference between committing a sin because of your own weakness and insulting Allah. If you have a weakness, say for some sin that you are committing, even if it is a major sin, but you have committed a sin, you are shy about it. Your weakness led you to commit a sin. You make tawbah, Allah will forgive you, etc. But when you are harming the deen, when you are harming Allah's deen and something sacred to Allah during the time that is sacred to Allah, at a time, at, at a place where it is sacred to Allah, whether it is in the house of Allah or the months of Hajj or the time of Ramadan or in the house of Allah, you've got to be much more careful because that is very 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 serious the sins are not all the same a man who commits adultery outside is bad news because obviously he's committed a sin but if the same man or another man were to commit the same sin in the house of Allah there is no comparison between the two because one has insulted in another way something that he cannot really defend himself against so this is why we say point number one yes you know all of us we should know that it's Allah he's in charge point number two Every one of us needs to ask ourselves, do we really consider what Allah has considered sacred as sacred? If the answer is yes, Alhamdulillah, good news to you. Allah will bless you. And if the answer is no, we have a lot to do. 
we have a lot to work for. A person comes into the house of Allah and steals, steals anything. You have stolen not from me, but from you, the house of Allah. What will happen? Hang on. I don't need to worry. Allah knows about it. You came and you did something, just wait. Wait for the time when Allah wants to send his tayran ababil in a different way. He will send it for your own elephant. Imagine, and I'll end on this note. When Abraha came in, he thought he was the superpower, man. He thought there's nothing going to stop me. Who will stop me? I've got the elephant. What happened to that elephant? The armies just used to look at it and they used to pee. Honestly, the armies used to look at it, finished. They just to see this beast, where's it from? They never knew what an elephant was. It wasn't in that peninsula. No, they used to look at this elephant. They already lost the war, gone. But with Allah, bring your elephant and the father of that elephant. Subhanallah, you cannot fight Allah. No way, don't challenge Allah, don't insult Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. What a beautiful lesson. There is so much happening on all levels. Sometimes it brings about a lot of sadness in the heart. Sometimes it brings about despondency. Don't, don't lose hope. Allah is in control. He is still in control. He will always be in control and he was always in control. But when he gives time, he does it for a reason. When he wants you to go through a challenge, he wants you to go through it for a reason. You, if you were oppressed, you will earn a reward for tackling it in the best possible way. And if you are the oppressor, he's just giving you a chance to solve the problem before the rope is pulled and then it's too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. May Allah grant us a lesson. May Allah grant us the humbleness and the humility to be able to respect that which is sacred. The houses of Allah, the Quran, the message of Allah, the Anbiya, the prophets of Allah, whatever else we need to make sure that these things and these places, we consider them absolutely sacred. May Allah purify our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. You know, sometimes we don't think any one of us, shaitan can come and attack us and tackle us anytime. You're in the house of Allah. You're not even supposed to raise your voice so much, especially with negative words. You're not supposed to. And shaitan comes to us sometimes and makes us do exactly that. And sometimes the good from amongst us can also get involved in something you're not supposed to be getting involved in, in the house of Allah. So let's take heed each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. And may he grant us the opportunity to make tawbah. May he grant us the opportunity to turn to him in a way that we are not punished just like Abraha was punished.